And we're live. Hello and welcome everybody to the Vibe World of Warhammer. With us today, we've got the sexy motherfucker himself, Benny from uh, The Gathering Storm. How are you doing, buddy? I'm going great. Look, <laughs> sexy, I'm laying here on a day, an Ikea day bed in my spare room. On my side, like, it is the full sexy pose, so I don't, I'm glad you noticed that. Uh, of course. How could I not notice that? But also, the man with the most majestic beard I've seen uh, this far in Queensland, I mean, for sure. Michael Minches, how you doing, buddy? Not too bad yourself, Sammy. Doing well, doing well, thank you. So, so these two gents run the Gathering Storm podcast, and I uh, wanted to chat to them about all things like Dad Hammer and just sort of always the average gamer, average banter, and then, no, actually, that's pretty good banter. I'll, I'll leave it alone. It's, <laughs> it is good banter. I wouldn't disrespect you like that. But um, talk about all things like sort of Dad Hammer, because everyone's got lives to live. There's only so few 40K professionals um, in this hobby. But talk to some uh, people who are working careers and how you manage playing your love of hobby as well as playing Warhammer on the side. So, but before you get stuck into things, so Ben, for people who've never listened or to the Gathering Storm, like how long have you been playing 40K for? Um, and like, what do you normally play? And like, why should people listen to the Gathering Storm, I guess? I'll, I'll fully load it all off, all off to you. Um, all right, I'll give you the abridged version. It was 1992. I was 12. Westfield Miranda, New South Wales, when I lived there. Um, new shopping centre so area opened up. Mates and I caught the bus. It was an hour journey. Uh, just outside the food court was a games workshop. Had no idea what it was, what it looked like, but it looked like Hero Quest back home. I made it my mission on my KFC job at the time to buy every single game and model in that shop when I was 12. And fast forward, I turned 20 and took up smoking girls and a few other substances and it uh, kind of all disappeared. Fast forward again, moved to South Australia, uh, gridiron rugby union, tried a bit of Aussie rules, injuries, body got tired, got bored, had to do something. Uh, I was, 36 walked past games workshop and said yeah i think it's time <laughs> um a whole 24 years later uh picked up the game at eighth edition always had a love affair with uh corn world eaters uh have played them have played the, the current edition always had a love affair with space marines namely ultramarines but uh, i also play chaos uh, sorry imperial knights but i'm also working on an eldar army so look i'm i'm my history runs deep but my experience, I guess, is probably limited. That's me. No, look, like it's a, st a story as old as time, right? Like people play it yep. when they're young, they sort of drop off between high school and university, come back at the latest stage. It's a story as old as time. It's a fill your own story, right? And plug and play with each person's name. But no, that makes sense. And it's funny you mentioned that you play Gridiron, so that's a shared passion now. So and I used to play for a long time. And it's funny, I literally, like my former uh, club I used to play for, I would say almost half of them are war games in one sense or the other. Like, I just love that strategy and tactics to it. I don't know, do you share like the same experience? Yep. <laughs> it's, yes, it's yes. Um, a guy, I remember it was his rookie year. And, and um, I, we, we were thinking, where the hell are we going to play this guy? He was so skinny, so scrawny. Uh, he started at cornerback. And now he owns his own CrossFit gym here in Adelaide. He's played like 275 games for the Mile Club, the Razorbacks. He's built like a brick shit house now. Um, but it turns out, I, I noticed on every Facebook post he does for his CrossFit gym, um, uh, sorry, uh, box or the gym, whatever they call it, he does a hashtag, only in death does Judy end. And I thought, oh, hang on, that's a strat that you can play for, uh, you know, the Ultramarines or whatever. And then he did another hashtag the other day. It was Adeptus Astartes. And I was like, oh, my God, I had to message him straight away. And I'm like, do you play Hammers? He's like, read all the books, own all the models, never played the game. He goes, but it's our secret, right? And I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's too funny, too funny. I mean, if yeah. it's good enough for Henry Cavill, it's good enough for him, right? I mean, oh, look, that's absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> but no, we'll, we won't, we won't uh, turn this into a like 40K slash American football podcast. So just yet. So don't turn off just yet. Don't turn off just yet. Um, Michael, <laughs> so uh, I understand you've had also quite a long journey as well. Like you've been playing this for a while. But like a uh, recap for the listeners, um, who, who you are. So, you know, someone in uh, Queensland as well. Um, where, how long have you been playing 40K for? Per se, so, what yeah. do you generally play? Uh, so I've been in 40K. I think I started when I was about nine. I'm 32 now. My brother at the time had just come back from the shopping center and goes, oh, you should come check out this store. I played a bit of chess when I was younger and liked my, my strategy. 
went into this store and just fell in love with all the different game systems and all the different strategy. Played it all throughout high school. Unfortunately, decided to go become a chef. And with that, you have no, no free time for anything all like that. So what is on the back burner for a few years and then jump back in. Not, not too long, not too long out before jumping back in. Played a lot in Brisbane, in Queensland. As a lot of people know, we've got quite a competitive group of people here. Uh, was doing reasonably well at Games Workshop tournaments and then branched out and went, oh, okay, Games Workshop tournaments are not a great, great barometer for competitiveness and started really pushing myself. Probably have only been really competitive the last four or five years. Uh, look, very, very, very diehard Eldar fan. Have been playing Eldar for as long as I remember, through thick and thin. So when it comes to things like me with with the Eldar, it's like, oh, this this model, yeah, I've got it. This model, yeah, oh, this is no longer good. I'll swap it out for this. And unlike a lot of people at the moment who may or may not just be randomly collecting Eldar armies, not looking at you at all, Ben, like all the models I have, I'm not just jumping on the bandwagon. And as you were lucky enough to see, on the weekend, Sam, when you came around to my house and took part in our little RTT we had going on, there's a pretty bloody big cupboard that I could just swap models in and out. And I refused on principle to put a Wraith Knight on the table. And when I played you, I had no Wraith Knights, no D cannons, no Fire Prisms, no Night Spinners, none of the those things at all. And uh, I think it was still a pretty fun game. But yeah, that's that's me, 20 years in, still loving every minute of it and pretty involved in the in the Queensland scene when I have time in between being a a new dad yes absolutely uh, it's about few and far between right having that time to play hammers do life stuff and do your job and everything else in between right so uh no it was an absolute pleasure to play and yes despite elder being obviously very good it was still a pleasure to play and uh tick that off the list right so we haven't had the chance to do so tick it off the list that's oh yeah ben will have to play it eventually one day you know top tables at uprising next year let's go here we go Six and no bracket. Uh, top, top, top tables. Yeah, look, I went three, three. Sorry, four, four. This year, look, the plans to go four, two next year. Um, yeah, you never know. For every group, you but, never know. <laughs> but the the gathering storms ethos is average. So if I become above average, does that mean I have to quit or? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's about the journey. It you just know? moves. Like, it yeah, it just moves. It yeah, is. you you just um, moved to Queensland and then you you're below average again, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> Exactly, oh. exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, legit, legit. Yeah, look, I mean, look, the best general podcast, I don't know if you were around, Ben, but there was a guy, Adam Brunwitz, who he was, uh, he's now working for the Army Painter, so he did a podcast about his journey all the way to becoming, winning the best general, so winning the top best, like the top number one overall, essentially, um, and it's an amazing podcast about that journey and getting to progress, so, and even if you get too big for your shoes, Ben, I mean, you'll become an Art of War coach, top of the ladder, winning ITC championships and stuff like that consistently without pressure. I mean, we'll still accept you, so don't worry about that. Uh, look, it, I, I haven't disclosed yet that I am a member of the, the Yabbies, so did you remember that obnoxious behaviour by all of us at Uprising? For shame. For shame. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Well, let's get back on topic. So, um, what is the Gathering Storm about? <laughs> we can talk about the Yabbies forever. Like... <laughs> we can talk about the Yabbies. Uh, 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 look, um, it, the, the, the Gathering Storm is a great story, uh, a shared story, um, and it started with the sale of a GSC army. Um, I acquired all this GSC stuff and got it to the standard I wanted, and... Uh, read the rules and tried to put all the models down and figure out a list and then work out how to play them. And I'm like, nah, nah, this isn't for me. You got to play stuff. this army perfect, big brain stuff. Uh, out onto um, Facebook marketplace we go, um, enter Minches. Um, and you, you can pick it up from here, Michael, because uh, I've got the ad on Facebook marketplace now. So, um, yep. Yeah, look, I, I saw the ad up on Facebook Marketplace and went 1500 bucks. Oh, look, it's not bad. It's not bad, but I can't really justify 1500 bucks. And then I messaged him saying, like, oh, you know, it's good. I wish I could afford it. Ben's like, yeah, sweet, no worries. And then a few weeks later, I saw it drop to 1200 bucks. And I went, all right, 1200 bucks. That's that's a 20% drop. That's, that's pretty decent. Look, I've collected everything that Eldar has. And in duplicate and triplicate and in, you know, 
dozens of in some areas where you can't use it. So I went, I messaged Ben and went, hey, look, I'm interested, but like 1200 bucks is a lot to drop in one go. So how do you feel about a payment plan? And Ben's like, look, you know, works for me. I said to him, if you need any references, you know, I've got pretty much the whole Queensland community. And Ben was like, you know, community is pretty good. So I started paying and then Ben's like, oh, you know, you come to Uprising. Like, yeah, sweet. I'll be there. He goes, oh, I'm from Adelaide. So if you've paid off half by the time you get there, you can just take it home with you. You know, I'll, you know, if you paid half, I trust you for the rest. I went, this dude's pretty, pretty freaking rad. Like that's a, a big show of faith. But I went, sweet. I'm going to gonna make sure I pay off that, uh, Fuck that extra no. 200 bucks. <laughs> Sounds like a scam. Best best scam I ever did, Dale, because it gets better. It gets better. Rock up to Adelaide, meet the legend, have a fantastic time, touch base with him multiple times throughout the event, pick the GSC up with him on the last day, and just like casually drop into him. So, oh, you know, hey, look, if I was to buy, you know, some more models, how would you feel about painting them? And Ben was like, yeah, sweet, I can paint them. I was like, oh, you know, I could pay you. Ben's like, no, no, it's fine. I was like, oh, okay. Big mistake. Big mistake is... My friend Jay would uh, definitely, definitely attest to because the very first package Ben received, I think, had 80 neophytes, another 15 jackals, and some characters. So I went, thanks, Ben. And Ben was like, oh, I underestimated this. Uh, and then, yeah, we, you we caring, just kept on changing. understanding 90s type. <laughs> Who'd have thought? But yeah, we just we kept on chatting. And then Ben, ben floated the idea. He's like, you know, we got pretty good vibes, man. Like, what do you what do you feel about just chatting about 40k and warhammer a bit more often and i went oh you know have a think you know i didn't want to overcommit. yeah great result Dave. great result <laughs> and commission painted too apparently which is even better and Dale's then on the beers. yeah and then you know I, I sat with it for a bit and i thought to myself i don't have as much time for for gaming and hobby as i would like because i'm a new dad and this is a way that i can connect with the hobby and still be engaged and enjoy it in my own home at a time that suits us so i went yeah fuck it ben let's do it let's do it and then i went out and bought a microphone because i was like i can i can invest something i'll put some of my hobby budget in and ever since then ben just keeps on telling me to stop typing because apparently my microphone's too good and picks up the sound of me typing as uh as we're podcasting but yeah that's just that's relaying how we... that from other people mate no and also no, stop I... typing yeah <laughs> you haven't sent me screenshots or anything but yeah we we picked it up and we kind of figured out like what what our niche was because every podcast at the moment kind of has to have a niche there's some fantastic content out there and we wanted to make sure that we were contributing to that but kind of stood out on our own way and we thought to ourselves you know like average 40k average players that that's kind of our thing and how to help the average 40k player in a in a way to improve and not necessarily in the way that your competitive podcast, your art of war, your, you know, sometimes your normal blokes, your ethos, all these incredibly competitive podcasts, but they're for that level of player that's kind of already there or really pushing and, to get there. And podcasts are like tower players. They're abundant and they're obnoxious. Um, and you've got to have a point of difference. Um, so, and, and our, our aim was never to compete, was never to steal listenership or to, to if anything, it's to create community and my ethos has always been let's keep the competition on the table and let's build the community so uh you'll see us always always shouting out other people and other other podcasts out there like this one in particular down under dale who's obviously tuning in at the moment uh steve joel adam camilleri i think they're all fantastic i and i always refer to the renaissance of 40k in australia at the moment and we are in a renaissance and i think the more engagement the top we have with the, yeah we are we are and the the more engagement we have with our community and the more we back one another the the bigger and better it's going to be so um yeah look it it does target you know the dad hammer element the you know to oh i'm middle aged michael's still on his way um parenting professional career which uh, i know is on the run sheet we'll get to that but yeah just just adding a, a slightly different flavor without doubling up on someone else's so to speak yeah different lens but, to look over it i guess yeah no and like even if you cover the same lens like there's different perspectives right so i know obviously so yeah. over in the us so obviously there's a guys from stat check doing x and one so very similar yep. ethos in the sense of like their dads have got professional careers but they also want to play competitive 40k and they want to do their best um here in yep. australia you, yourselves at the gathering storm but also as you mentioned before the ethos dies they had a recent series of interviews which i highly recommend for everyone like four part with four different uh 
uh, people who play Warhammer and their partners and how they balance all that jazz. It's amazing. And I think it's such great insight and different approaches, right? Because not one size or one, or one size fits all. So understanding yeah. all that. Jazz. And I think um, I'm a proud fan of you guys' stuff and I really enjoy it. So I'm really looking forward to chatting more and understanding more. So um, yeah, I guess to hand it over. So you mentioned a bit there before. So um, look, Michael, testing the friendship right there, right? I mean, 80 DOs <laughs> and 15 jackals. Like, look, how much of a commission pattern is this guy actually? <laughs> Well, look, I, I like to think of myself as a very patient person when it comes to getting mates to paint stuff. Uh, yeah, love you, Ben. Don't worry. I, I have a very funny story. I had a mate who was really keen to paint my Eldar way back when. And after 18 months of me buying 18 different oranges for this Eldar army, he turns around and goes, mate, I'm burnt out. I just can't do it. And I left with six half-painted jet bikes and went, that's okay, mate. That's fine. So I, I definitely am very, very patient. I've been extremely fortunate in my elder army getting picked up in the bulk by a good friend of mine, Jay Hansen, and he's done the same thing. He's literally, you, you saw Sam, the tray of Wraith Guard that are just sitting there because he's finished 50 Wraith Guard. He messaged me saying he's going to bring up some more stuff. He's the guy who I would quite frequently tag and post saying, hey, Jay, do I need this? And he would respond back, PM me, goes, dude, you have 45 fucking sweeping hawks. You don't need any more sweeping hawks. You can't run 45 sweeping hawks. And I'd be like, but these ones are metal. And he'd be like, you have 24 annals. So as someone who Ben and I mentioned might have a very, very slight problem with with purchasing of, of 40K and you definitely didn't see the extent of it in my in my room, Sam, and the the cupboards and the boxes and yeah, it's called look. gas. <laughs> Games acquisition syndrome. Yeah, it's. I I've been very very fortunate when Ben said, "Yep, yeah, look, I'll, I'm happy to help you out. I'll look after you." I went sweet, happy to do the same. I I'm pretty good at procuring models for people. I seem to have a knack of finding really really good specials. Like I bought. This bulk lot with two storm surges, two repulsor executioners, two riptides, ghost kills, land raider, 150 models on infantry for 350 bucks posted, and things like that. And I said to Ben, "Look, I'll, I'll always look after you." And now I just wait with bated breath to see these first uh, new GSC models painted, which he assures me for the last three weeks that they're on the painting table. Any any more on that, Ben? Oh, you're, you're just a bit away from your mic. We can't hear you, Benny. Oh, yeah. I've got all this Eldar stuff, Michael, that uh, you sent down to me. And I look, I've got to paint that first, don't I? Because it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> look, it's it's the new hotness, too. Like, if I was in your shoes and I had all this beautiful new Eldar stuff sitting on my desk, I'd be sitting there like, oh, damn, like, this is, this is the stuff I need painted. And look, unfortunately for you, I'm not in your shoes because I have all the Eldar stuff and I have it all painted. So... I think it's been no, generations no, in the making, right? Oh, literally, <laughs> literally decades of, of work. Like there are models that I bought when I was 10, 11 years old that are in my army that I still use today, which is actually kind of cool when you think about it, but also a little bit disappointing when you look at those monopose bought spiders and you just break, break a little bit inside. Yeah, look, they haven't aged too well, have they? But that's all right. That's all right. Hopefully just, new spot, new ones are on the way. New ones on the four way. Dudes, four dudes doing this. <laughs> One slightly yeah. lower gun. I'm like, come on, mate. Let's give me something. Absolutely. But yeah, Ben, how's, the... how, how's go, the GSC going, Ben? Yeah, so, um, yeah, Dale said uh, he wants to know about my seductive lounging. Um, <laughs> in particular. Sorry, sorry. did you say something, Michael? Or... <laughs> no, but... Yeah, so... um, I'm... I'm waiting for 80 neos like what's the time frame on them can i can i start brainstorming lists for you know a couple of weeks time or yeah so dale uh seductive lounging um i've got my <laughs> yellowstone top on um i'm on my side pose here um yeah a bunch of grapes made over the privates and i think that'd be it <laughs> that's definitely a way to do it that's definitely a way to do it so um you guys mentioned that so El michael you got obviously an extensive elder collection and i've heard that advice actually quite a couple of times from parents of people or dads and stuff like that to sort of build your collection so don't collect 2k armies at a time Oop, oh, sorry benny's just dropped out but um michael have, have you have you found that like having a collection of models and like building deep rather than a wide per se now you're like obviously starting to collect one have like a couple of armies and stuff like that to branch out to has it kept, allowed you to like to stay in the hobby per se for a bit longer you say or be able to play it all the time look 
I, I absolutely love having a wide collection because like we saw on the weekend, Sam, when when I had that first game and I went, cool, I'm going to use my Cobra. I haven't used my Cobra in ages. I'm going to pull out my Hornets. I'm going to pull out my Racer. Like all this stuff that I've just got and I just put it on the table. And after that first game, I went, that was cool. But I want to try some other stuff now. So I'm going to pull out my links and I'm going to pull out. And just having this awesome wide collection means that in the tough times and people will not understand this, but in the not so decent past, there were some really tough times for Eldar where we went many, many years without any updates. And, you know, I had to keep on reinventing the wheel and I'd reinvent the wheel. I'm like, cool, this works. This is great. And then the next codex would come. I went, ah, Drakari have neg one damage. I need to come up with something else so I could go to that huge collection and go, I'm going to do this. Or even just when I wanted to try something different, I I had it there. I had it there to try. And I went, I'm just going to, going to try this thing. Will it work? I don't know. I remember there was a GT I went to towards the end of eighth, I think it was. And I went, stuff it. I'm going to take a brigade of Eldar because I don't think anyone has ever taken a brigade of Eldar to an event. And I took a brigade of Eldar and came up against this guy in South Australia, one Josh and Gelke. And he was running the new hotness of Grey Knights at the time with just like a casual four Dread Knights, nothing, nothing broken at all. Just four of them on the table. No big problem. Definitely wasn't a, a struggle for my my poor Eldar. And came came pretty damn close, like a a, a a TO call away from from actually beating him with the brigade. And I went, cool. I don't even care anymore. The fact that that I'm challenging with this, this is great. So I'm a big big fan of going deep. But you get to the stage where I, I've gone about as deep as you can go. I, that's yeah, kind of where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, like you've seen, it's like the, you know, there's there's at least one of everything and the max amount of pretty much everything. So I've now started to go wide and I've gone, all right, I'm just going to try and pick up some armies and just have them there. So if I want to try something new or if I have mates come around or I have people who, who want to try armies, I've got them. So... I started off with picking up an Imperial Knights army. I picked up like three mediums, one big and 12 littles for 900 bucks. I went, sweet, I'll do that. I've got the GSC army from Ben and organizing to get that pumped up to non-rookie numbers. And one then, day. One day. And then at one stage, it looked like at ATC this year, our tower player, Hayden Wilduck, was going to have to leave at about 3.30 on the Saturday, which means he'd have about a game and a half of tower unplayed. And as the coach, I was going to step in. So I went, cool, I'm going to go buy a Tau army. I'm going to learn how to play Tau. And every couple of days, Tay would message you go, this is my list. It's 99% locked in. I'm like, okay, cool. So I put it into Battle Scribe, put it on the table and try and learn how to play it. And then a couple of days later, he goes, oh, this is my list. It's 99. And I, I, okay, cool. We've changed steps. We've changed. Okay, cool. Put it in. And then three days later, this is my list. I was like, mate, I'm, I'm not keeping up here. And fortunately, we didn't have to go that route. He was able to, to play the whole time. But now I have a tower on me that's with another friend, Dan Burns. Big shout out to you. I'm very excited to see those tower painted as well. So you can tell I'm huge on the painting. Absolutely. Yeah. Just delegate everything to everyone else. Um, but what do you think yourself, Ben? So someone obviously relatively new to the hobby per se in the sense of coming back recently. Yep, I yep. understand you've also collected comment. deep in the yep. world. Um, back in, you collected deep in world eaters. Has that allowed you like to play a bit more diversely? And like, you, I know you've spread it now. You've got a bit of Eldar. Um, how does it help for you, like, be able to play games and stuff like that? Um, yeah, look, it, I guess coming back, it was a massive leap of faith. 12 months ago, I decided to start playing competitively, you know, giving up playing in my mate's shed maybe once a quarter uh, against the same people. Uh, decided if I'm going to play the hobby, I've got to, I've got to immerse myself in it. And I took uh, Ultramarines to my first ever um, tournament, which is a neophyte series run by the same guys that do Uprising. So Josh, Simon, Napier. Um, yeah, they do a lower tier, like find your feet neophyte event here in Adelaide, which is fantastic. It's really low intensity, low pressure. Um, yeah, it, it was very overwhelming and it's it's less overwhelming now, but it's still overwhelming. You come up against a faction you got no idea about, how your army works into them, how they play against each other. You can listen to podcasts, read books, but until you're on the table and you actually experience it and learn from your own mistakes. Um, back to your original question, question on World Eaters. Uh, look, 
they're a first turn army. I when the when the book dropped for ninth, I played six games all at tournament level and went first each time and then decided to stop. Luck's gonna run out eventually. Um look they're good good fun, glass cannon style army. Uh if you can make it to turn five, uh you're doing better than me. Uh that being said, things need to die for you to score points. Again, I'm talking ninth, but um my problem is very similar to Michael's. I uh, I find myself not sticking with the same thing for too long. Like I'll see something new or I'll oh, what if I bought those? Or maybe I could give that a go. Or um and that's actually how I found I've learned more about the game is um acquiring a new book, acquiring the models, reading, coming up with my own combos and I'm probably a little bit prepped for it. Um not sure if I've gone off topic from your original question, but um, No, no, it's good fine. No, um but Imperial Knights at the moment, so let's fast forward to 10th edition. I've played one whole game of 10th. I'll play my next one this week. But I, I noticed that the Imperial Knights book is, well, it's not a book, the index is quite simple. Um, there's one faction, there's Noble Lance, there's two um, there's two oaths, Lalo the Tyrants, and I forget the other one. Bondsmen's are simple, and Knights are actually fun again, and the big boys are relevant because they're high toughness, high wounds. Um, so, yeah, look. I think 10th is both great and confronting, probably less so for me. I've only been on the tournament circuit for 12 months. But I, Eldar are looking really good at the moment. Uh, I think if I brought them to a tournament now, I'd get called a meta chaser uh, because uh, I've acquired them and all of a sudden they've become good. But um, I'll vouch for you, mate. Don't worry. I know, I know yeah. you didn't. You were, I got you. I got you. Don't worry. You got, you got me uh, a whole bucket of stuff I got in the cupboard over there soaking in simple green at the moment um, just to <laughs> try and get some old paint off them. Um, for me, end gaming is just been about networking. It's been about putting yourself out there. It's been about uh, taking the odd risk um, and not being afraid to, to jump into the tournament scene. Terracon just came past. I grudged Matt Morisoli my first game. Hell yeah, that's awesome. So um, let's also let's backtrack a bit there. So uh, yep. talking about Inner South Australia, so the Acolyte and Neophyte yep. series. So for people aren't aware, yep. so the Neophyte series, so is it all set yep. for beginner players? So people, for beginner players yeah. in the sense of beginner people are attending RTTs, so yep. a road trade tournament, so the one day events. So essentially dads like yourselves or people who are brand new to 40K, they can attend these events and know yeah, they're playing against people sure. of that same level and caliber. Um, How like how important was it to you to be able to step into like such a, a, a beginner-friendly environment? Like it was, it, uh, like did it help you make that step forward? And now from yes, there, you can yes. go forward. If it wasn't for Neophyte, I don't think I would be on this podcast now. So Neophyte was very much, um, yeah, come play a tournament. It's designed for people that have never been in that tournament setting before. I had a few practice games on a clock beforehand, but literally the the handshake at the start is very different. It's like um, if I do something wrong, tell me. If you do something wrong, tell me. And yeah, look, um, my first game, I think we only made it to turn three in three hours. Um, the next game was better and the next game was better. And they suggest you stay in the Neophyte series until you, you're you comfortable to step up. But me being me, nah, I wanted out of Neophyte straight away. I wanted to be paying the best guys. I wanted, I wanted to learn by losing. They say it takes... A thousand games of chess that you've got to lose before you fully understand how you got to win, and I, I've just always taken that approach. That's a great saying to um, have, and uh, I think uh, having those are beginner events. So back where I used to live in Canberra, they the, like the big jolts series that the one day events were designed. The ethos was to be as beginner friendly as possible and user friendly as possible, so that way people get their feet wet and then they can expand yeah. further onwards and they get that feeling. Because the big, the best thing we could do for this game, or I believe, and I think a lot of people believe, is get more people involved, get more people playing. It doesn't matter if you're playing top yeah. tier, competitive, meta chasing, yeah. doing the best you can. As long as you're enjoying the game and playing it, that's the best thing they can do for the hobby. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I know, Michael, yourself, so you said you had very similar, a bunch of friends who are keen on getting in. He's like, hey, hold off a bit. Let me show you, like, get your feet wet, uh, wet per se, and, like, start making baby steps into it. So, I think that's a well, that's, big thing for dads. That's kind of what 
like Sunday was all about Sam. I had that. I organized a little RTT and I said a little. There's only six people actually playing. We had a few more people come through, but I've been blessed with a pretty kick-ass hobby space. So I thought to myself, once tenth drops, I'll make an event. I'll invite some people around and let's just let's just learn how to play the game because I have not kept up with all the drops and everything like that. I'm just a little bit out of the loop with that. So I went stuff it. Let's just let's just have people around. Let's play a couple of games. Let's have some fun. Let's enjoy that. Ben, you talk about a three-hour game. I think Sam had a three-hour movement phase in our game as he tried to figure out exactly how to hide all of his bugs from my scary Eldar, which was you know glorious for me to watch because movement phase was really easy for me. Just move so I can shoot stuff. But it, it is so important when introducing people to the hobby that we are doing it in the right way. There's, you know, it takes a very, very rare person who goes, yes, I want you to absolutely destroy me and wipe the floor with me. And that will make me want to keep on coming back and playing. That's exactly what I want. That's not what people want. People don't necessarily need to win, but they need to have fun with it. So I have definitely introduced my fair share of people into the hobby, even into more competitive gaming. There's a few mates that I've been like, hey, just, just come to this tournament. And they go, what if I lose every single game? I'm like, do you have fun when you roll dice? They go, yeah. I'm like, are you going to have fun regardless? When was the last time you got to play three games of Warhammer in one day? And they go, oh, yeah, all right. And they come and they end up having a great time. So like that community, that networking, that camaraderie on and off the table, across the table is just so important to make sure that we we do grow the grow the community, grow the scene, and just have as many people enjoying this wonderful hobby that we have as possible. Absolutely. Just get that, a bit of a mental health check. Being able to just chat with the mates and friends and talk all things hammers. Like we have that one thing common that we love and enjoy. So you don't have to get that time away, that one weekend or that one day away, just to breathe and get away from the work and stress like that is amazing for people. Um, I guess that one thing that's often you talked about before, you said, Michael, you, you did the podcast because you knew you were going to struggle to find time to actually play in events and tournaments. Um. Ben, for yourself, how do you try and manage uh, being obviously a father and dad? You've got your uh, responsibilities to your partner, to your kids, to your career. How do you try and manage your desire to play 40K games and study whilst doing everything else? Like, what do you have like, a set routine or a, a, a methodology, or what do you try and do? Um, the buzzword in, is communication, first and foremost. So, I've got two teenage sons to my ex wife, they're 15, 13. Uh, my 15-year-old plays state cricket and my 13-year-old plays state football. Uh, I've since remarried and I have an 18-month-old daughter. I have a corporate professional career and I'm interstate a lot. Um, I'm not the ideal candidate for a 40K player, podcaster, uh, you know, competitive aspirator, whatever you want to call it, but anything's possible and i know that sounds like a franklin covey piece of artwork that you might see in an office somewhere but um ultimately uh communication is key so very fortunate here in south australia that uh the likes of simon josh and um napier they put out a calendar for the year um they gives me the opportunity to plan. Uh, I know when my boys are playing cricket, I know when they're playing football. Uh, and then I communicate with my uh, lovely wife now and say, I can make it work on these dates and I reckon I can play 12 tournaments this year. She'll look at it too with me and say, done. Right, that's step one. Pre-planning, very, very important. So I had Terracon recently, that was three nights away. Uh, that was on the June long weekend. My cell was, ah, it's June, it's cold. What are we going to do anyway? It, it's going to yeah. be freezing. Turns out it was a lovely weekend up here in Adelaide. And um, that, that all backfired on me. Um, I guess for her, it's seeing how much I enjoy this, how much I get out of it. She says, you're a different guy when you've been to a tournament. You're a different guy when you've been and played. You come back, you're engaging, you're, you're participating participative she said the two days before i went to terracon she said it's the most helpful you've been around the house like i cooked dinners for her for the next three nights i i did all the washing i did the house cleaning i literally did all the things um and i, I guess that's how i balance that element that's only one part the the study the painting 
of my own models and Michael's uh, is the next layer. The acquiring isn't so hard, like financially, I guess I'm I'm quite lucky uh, with, with my job. Uh, I mean, it's still not a cheap hobby, um, but look, commission painting is a thing that I engage, uh, assembly, um, reading. Look, how, ma how many of us get caught on this stupid thing? Scrolling TikToks and stupid videos and memes. And look, there's a place for that. We all need that release and sometimes mindless memeing and scrolling is really good, but I often snap myself out of it and so does my wife and says, don't you have like one of those books to read or something to assemble? And I'm like, who am I to argue with you? Um, I'll put my phone down and I'll go read. And um, that's what I do. Podcasting, I learn so much. I fall asleep to them. My, my game in the morning is to find my earbuds in the bed. Um, ready to take to work but I normally get about 40 minutes of a podcast in before I fall, before I fall asleep depending on who's talking and how engaging they are like I got through all of Vic VJ and David Gaylard's scathing of 10th edition uh, I think I actually started playing it again just to hear it again but communication can't stress it enough uh, yeah. not Gen Z Dale uh, very <laughs> much Gen X mate so um <laughs> almost a boomer um yeah it, it it is possible it is possible um oh look at this speaking of lovely wife uh glass of wine a piece of chocolate oh, oh cherry fell out so mm. Thank oh, you, bed like kings look at this this is quality yeah. absolute quality that must be yeah. that seductive lounging that he's got going on so well oh, that's, that's the key yeah um <laughs> And anything, absolutely anything is possible. Uh, communication. If you spring it on your partner two days before a tournament and say, I'm going to a tournament on Sunday. Um, yeah, good luck. Yeah, look, planning, careful. I can't stress it enough. Yeah, put, um, put it in the calendar and the communicating is uh, so yeah. far events is amazing. Like, yeah, I, I think it's great to have that sort of back and forth. So say, hey, obviously when your partner has that weekend away or wants to do something, like, give them the time to do so, then obviously reciprocate, right? And making it all manage and work out. So, uh, Michael, how do you sort of make it work out with your own partner and like your own kids? So um, how do you try and organize games for yourself or get stay relevant to the Warhammer community? Look, that's definitely a work in progress. It's something that I'm always working at getting better at because like I've only got one kid uh, at Little Ashes. He's 15 months old, so he's still still quite young like like ben's kid and he is the best kid hands down the best kid sam you met him on the weekend like he's just the funniest little lad just i i really want to get a sound bite of him going oh no because there's nothing funnier than a, than a one-year-old saying that and throwing their hands up in the air it's, it was adorable he's the best kid my my lovely partner danielle she's ridiculously supportive she's helped facilitate the construction of this awesome room and I still struggle sometimes to get that balance right. And it's something that I, I'm definitely working on at the moment. And it's it's been harder to get the balance right when my son was younger. And it's it's about just taking taking that bit of time where I go, okay, Warhammer will always be there, but this, this times won't. And my partner needs me now. And after realizing that, perhaps a little bit too late, I have definitely like redoubled my efforts to make sure that that's, that's definitely the priority. The podcast has been a huge help. Podcast has been a huge help because Ben and I have to talk throughout the week. We have to have that chat and go, okay, what are we going to talk about? What, what have we seen? We try and encourage each other to, to really come up with some inventive topics. We need to be aware of what's happening. And then it, it does come down to that communication and planning that Ben was talking about. Like I sat down with my partner and said, I'd like to, do this when the next edition drops. I'd like to have people around in my house and I'd like to play some games. And she said, that's a great idea. You're finally going to use the space that you've got. You're not driving or flying into state, which is a big thing. Super supportive, super supportive. And if it means you miss out on some, tour some tournaments, you miss out on some tournaments. Yeah, it's it's just man dollies at the end of the day. It's, it's about keeping that balance because what you put in now 
will help you later on. The biggest thing that I'm really excited is that my partner's now at the stage where she can start going away and she can start doing things that she wants, which is fantastic that I can finally reciprocate that. Like my son's old enough. I'm competent enough, arguably, to make sure he doesn't die in my care for 24 to 48 hours. But the craziest thing that she said to me, I was like, oh, you can go to all these things. She goes, I actually just would rather spend more time with you and him. So I've that was a bit of a shock to me. So I went, okay. I now try and carve out more and more time during the week that we can spend together. And that helps with wanting to get to do all of the the hobby that I want to do. You know, it's, it's a balancing act, but with practice and communication, I'm, I'm definitely getting better at it. And I'm excited to see what the next six months is for me in that balancing act. Yeah, I can imagine. And like, as you, uh, your son gets older and older, like, you'd be sorry, a similar situation to Ben. So, obviously, having your son, if they have like play a sport of some sorts on Saturdays and Sundays, be occupied with various things and trying to manage all that fun jazz. So, um, but you mentioned before as well. So, obviously, this hobby in Australia and New Zealand is obviously quite expensive and it's uh, not a cheap one at all. So, how do you sort of, so start with yourself, Ben, how do you manage it? I guess the finances per se with your partner, say, hey, I want to do this. And then, but, be able to afford it per se like you have a set routine i understand you generally have like is it 50 dollars a week and if you don't eat out it's the same amount yeah look um i think with people like me that have an addictive personality uh everything is about control um and you know as much as i'd just like to buy everything uh, all at once and you know, have my, my pile of shame just stare at me, but I look back at it with utter delight. Uh, control is very important. Um, you know, I get my 50 bucks a week or 100 bucks a fortnight. And look, I have found that to be a uh, very <laughs> pile of potential. Um, very, um, like, like, very adequate. Um, I think the way I've managed it is to look at, what doesn't have potential or what is staring at me like my GSC army and saying, do I really need this? Do I see myself taking this to uprising? Do I see myself playing this at Terracon? No, right, move it on. Reload my uh, my hobby fund and I have my own uh, offset account linked to our mortgage for my hobby fund. And yeah, look, sometimes that money accumulates and sometimes I'm I'm in debt to it and other times it, it, it's sort of in and out as quickly as it goes. But if I need anything for that big purchase, I just assess my uh, pile of potential or pile of shame and say, what here don't I need? What was an impulse buy? What wasn't? Um, with me, it's I want to play every game in every system. I've since given up that. You know, I've sold all my Malifaux stuff, sold all my Dystopian War stuff. I can't bring myself to sell my Kingdom Death collection um only because it's rare as hen's teeth um i had a second ed my original second ed 40k box with the monopose orcs space marines whatever i saw one sell for 500 bucks on facebook marketplace and i'm like i don't use it it just stares at me and i stare back at it and go no, i remember you um i sold it for 500 bucks that was a great re-up. Uh, do I, I regret it? No. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, 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 yeah, it's awesome. Like, I think things are just sit there and you're not, not going to use it, like being able to sell it and be, turn it into something profitable. Yeah. And like just, but, yeah. So like, I was, um, I can't remember the, the, the lady, she does all the cleaning shows that makes you feel happy. It makes you feel good. But um, I can't remember. Yeah, it's head, Headspace. Marie it's, Kondo. It's, Marie Kondo, that's the one. I was thinking that's Martha Stewart or, or something from a porno. Um, but, yeah, like... You and I clean very it. differently, Ben. Uh, yeah, look. Uh, anyway, I don't clean. Um, the Yeah, so it uh, problem is, though, now my pile of potential or pile of shame is, is, is getting very, very lean. I've got all this GSC stuff here I should probably sell pretty soon uh, i don't know whose they are um but it's it's then buying second hand and i think michael and i chatted on the gathering storm about how to optimize your money if you're on a budget um borrowing models is pretty huge like 
I'm not playing my Space Marines at the moment. Look, the the index cards is it'd take a team of QCs a month of Sundays to work out the best combo. So I'm going to let the meta sort that out. Uh, I've just put the I've put the word out to anyone I know that plays Space Marines are saying I've got seven thousand points of this shit. You can borrow whatever you want. I'm playing Knights for a while. So um, that sense of community. Uh, it, I see it in our chats, uh, you know, for the Abbey Hunters and a few other groups. Hey, has anyone got this? Has anyone got that? If you don't have to buy it, don't buy it. Borrow it. Because who knows, you might buy something once, play it, not like it, and then you're kind of stuck with it. Like I bought a Baden. I was going to run a Baden back before the World Eaters Codex dropped. I painted him up to such a great standard, but he just stares at me. And look, I stare back at it, him, and I give him a smile, but I'm not using him, and I don't think I ever will now. Um. So he could be next, but yeah, don't buy impulsively, optimize, uh, find the best way to purchase things. If you can get them secondhand, and I'm not going to promote 3D printing or, you know, recasting. Everyone knows it's out there. Everyone knows what to do with, with that side of things. I don't know if you're endorsed by uh, G-dubs or whatever, but look, there are ways and means to do this within your budget. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, uh, anything else? Or like, there are ways to do it with your budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smart. But but having having your own personal budget, financial budget. Again, I go back to that buzzword communication. Say to your partner, look, interest rates are going up. Everything's going up. What if I had a limit? Or what are you going to give up to take that limit? Like it's give and take. And anyone that's in a relationship knows that it's all about compromise. So. Uh, my wife said I can have $50 a fortnight or if I take my lunch every day to work, I can have $50 a week. I'm like, fuck it, I'll take my lunch. I'll eat a veggie bite sandwich to, to buy more plastic crack. But that's a great trade-off because I was spending 20 bucks a day buying my lunch in the city. That's $100 a week. So she'd give me half that saving. Great. Bang. Communication. Win-win. Um, yeah, look, $100 doesn't go far at Games Workshop. But... Um, but Jack Kennard on Facebook, a hundred bucks goes a long way. So, uh, especially yeah. if you get him while he's had a few beers. <laughs> there we go. That's the secret to success. Just uh, you know, <laughs> secretly just get drunk, Jack a bit drunk, or some of those Facebook sellers yeah. drunk. And, 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 and everyone way. listening knows who Jack Kennard is. Seriously, like, <laughs> if we haven't seen a post from Jack Kennard, do you even Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, the, Facebook is definitely the hub of Warhammer by swap sell pages and the ha yeah. hub of chat. But I know someone who's a fiend for Facebook slips, as you discussed earlier, is Michael. So, what's like the Facebook flipping for you? Like, is it allow you to like, accelerate your savings per se, like a bit of a side hustle, or is that the way you can afford things essentially? Look, it's 100% a side hustle. I figure I spend enough time on Facebook that I can dedicate a bit of time looking for really, really good deals. And I seem to have a habit or uh, a knack or just plain lucky and I managed to find some really, really good deals. No, I'm talking about when I find the deals, not the need to find them. And I also, like, I dabble in Lord of the Rings Warhammer as well because I'm a huge fan of that series and I've found some... Fucking nerd. Yeah, massive nerd, but we knew that. Like, I found some incredible lots. Like, I found a lot with a like, Balrog, a Metal Dragon... Gulvaha and a cave drake and i did the math and i could sell any one of those models pretty much for the price i paid for the whole lot so i sold two of them and made 100 percent profit and kept two models and i was like cool that's a win the the latest big lot where i looked at the thing and there was two storm surges i'm like well that's 562 dollars from games workshop and this person's willing to post it to me for 350 and I spoke to a mate of mine who was just getting back into the hobby, good old Theo. And I said, hey, Theo, I'm about to buy this lot. I know you're getting into your space marines. You get a lot of infantry, but you don't have very many tanks. How does two repulse executioners, land raider, crusader, a razorback, three drop pods, maybe something else. I was like, how's that sound for 400 bucks? And he went, that sounds amazing because that's like 800 bucks. I was like, cool. Like, I, I don't need to stress because I've made my money back plus 50 bucks, plus picked up 800 bucks worth of stuff for my tower army, plus still have more stuff to sell. So I've just gone like, all right, flipping Warhammer, you need to be aware of what the value is. You need to be aware of what you can get for it. And you need to be aware that sometimes you'll sit, you'll sit on it. It's not always reliable. I 
am able to procure models for people that are harder to get or that are exceedingly expensive people contact me and say hey can you can you get this and one way or another i normally find a way and it is it is definitely kind of like my side hustle it helps with my warhammer budget but it also also helps because a lot of the time i've turned around to my lovely partner and gone hey you know that uh that lorna jane set of tights that you wanted yeah i've bought them for you they're on the way and i've just kind of redistributed a bit just just to make sure that my partner sees sees the the benefits of of warhammer and sometimes i'll say to her babe i need to do some warhammer work and she goes okay looks at me a bit confused and then lets me just scroll away or message people or you know grease wheels or you know finalize orders or organize postage stamps and it's it is almost like a part-time job look yes james what what you need i got i got any any, anything you need i've got but like that's Look, Michael's a plastic crack dealer, not a regular crack dealer. He's just a plastic crack dealer. It's just, fine, okay. <laughs> just James, James's comment there. I know you're from South Australia, mate. I picked up a uh, a Questorus Knight from the Highlander car park. He messaged me and I said, he said, I'm wearing a blue jacket and a black beanie and I'm in the car park of the pub. I pulled up next to him and anyone who knows where the Highlander is, it's, it's a bit dodgy. And I said, this doesn't look sus at all. And he goes, nah, fuck it. There's a camera right there. It'll give him something to think about. He passes me this model. I pass him the money and I drive off. Anyway. I'll, I'll, I'll go you one better, Benny. Go uh, on. For those, those of us in Queensland, if you know <laughs> of a place. <laughs> yeah, I know Fortitude if... Valley. No, 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 not Fortitude Valley. I'm talking, I, I live in Logan, which has a pretty bad rep as it is, but there's a place, lovely old Beanley, which quite often has people stabbed in it. I have met someone in like a Beanley medical car park and handed them Ziploc bags worth of plastic crack and then they even handed me cash. And then within five minutes, the police have done a bit of a drive through. And again, my lovely partner's gone, what would you do if the police came over? I'd be like, I'd look them straight in the face and say, I'm selling some man dollies. And they would probably piss themselves laughing and then go on their merry way. But yeah, dodgy, dodgy I'll, car park deals. I've, I've done I'll it. Go I'll go you one better, and this isn't a pissing Oof. comp, but I, I just pissed to the ceiling with this one. It didn't happen to me. During COVID in the UK, it was a, an interview with the owner of Siege Studios. So we've all heard of Siege Studios, uh, great mini painters over in the UK. So during COVID, the lockdown, he would meet people in car parks. It was the non-contact time, and he'd do it at night, hand over their minis, do the money exchange. Anyway, a cop walked over and said, I've been watching you the past couple of nights. What's going on here? And the guy took, the cop took one look at him and go, oh, you're that mini painter guy. Oh, <laughs> turns out the guy from Siege Studios, the guy that owns it, had to open up the package and show him the models. And they actually did a transaction there and then to paint some of his that he had in his car. That's, that's that fantastic. was on a podcast. That was on a podcast. Anyway, so anyway, the cop thought it was a drug deal, and that's just very atypical of uh, our hobby, our industry. Anyway, it wasn't my turn to talk back to you. <laughs> Give us oh, that's fantastic. Crack. That's fantastic. But yeah, I think that's a great race to like be able to afford the hobby and like um, to put borrowing models from people, being able to borrow armies, play some things, get a feel for things, but before um, actually making that financial commitment. Like tabletop simulator has been great for me to test things out, see how I feel about armies before I buy them uh, as proxy. well as like being able to buy things secondhand and proxying absolutely Pro proxy is big and look i'm i'm going to jump on this opportunity to give a massive shout out to my friend the loki gaming store is your irresistible force at tanamira in near the hot logan hyperdome they're uh, a fantastic company that do games extra products with discount they've got like a membership program to get an even more discount they've always looked after me and continue to look after me in the podcast which is like a massive massive help for us so again support your local gaming stores when you can they're just as aware of you of how expensive a hobby is i i do whatever i can when i can may or may may not have bought two leviathan boxes and organized for a mate to to fix me up for one of them but like games workshop's going to get their money because they're games workshop and they are such a big business and their profits are not dropping and whilst their profits are not dropping i'm going to try and support the local gaming stores that that have supported me or give me that place to play as well it's another another easy way for those of you who are looking 
search them up. There's heaps out there. Everyone has their own personal flavor or choice. Do that as well. Yeah, exactly. Like a friendly local gaming store, making sure someone that supports you, supports the community and helps you out, like they should get your money and you should be supporting them. So when you go play a game, like just buy some paints or give buy a voucher. That's something I always just do on a Thursday night, buy a voucher of equivalency. Then I'd cash them in and I'd get like a big model. It's like, woohoo, I didn't drop 250 bucks on a big prime up. So like I feel like, oh, I built this up and they it's almost installment payments, right? There we go. Uh, <laughs> after pay is dangerous though be so yes, careful absolutely. of afterpay i when when the eldar range dropped i was very, again very very lucky i messaged john and said hey john eldar's dropping his and he said to me don't worry whatever i get i will put aside until you tell me exactly what you want and then i'll put the rest of the stock up and i was like well that's great but i want like everything and he's like that's one so i then tallied up how much everything was and i was like, i'm going to try afterpay and it sounds great at the time until every trap. fortnight, every fortnight, 250 bucks of your money just disappears. I was like, I will very, very, very seldomly ever use this again because it's just, it's, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's an absolute trap. Like, same with credit cards, like, you, you fall into such an easy trap and then you it's, you take it forever to dig yourself out of it. So, uh, be very, very careful. And at the end of the day, this isn't putting food on the table or putting a roof over your head. This is just a hobby. Don't put yourself into financial debt for this. But uh, I mean, you can make your own decisions, but I would I strongly advise, I think you all say, <laughs> strongly advise you to put yourself in financial debt for some toy soldiers at the end. Um, ben, so you've mentioned before that you travel a lot for work. So obviously, mm. corporate job. How Do, do you yep. try and like try and get games of Warhammer when you're traveling? So, uh, for example, I'm... Funny enough, I'm in a position now. I travel actually back to Canberra once a month or so, and so yep. for a week at a time. And I actually try and organise games while I'm away to catch up with people. Do you try and do the same with you? Um, it it's a good question, Sam, and it's something that I'm going to look at a little bit better. Um, a lot of my travel was to Perth, Alice Springs, Darwin. Well, it still is Melbourne, Sydney. Well, look, everywhere. Uh, I've done one trip to Brisbane this year. Uh, I always make a point to go to a game store in whatever state I'm in and purchase something or just chat to them, whatever, or ask about the community. But now I know a little bit more about it, you know, since doing the podcast, playing at Uprising, like, and the good thing about Uprising is you meet people from all different states is, yeah, look, I am going to consciously try and do that. Um, uh, I've just I've just hired someone who's very prominent in the... Um, the scene here in South Australia, I, I won't name it yet, but um, I've got to take that person over to to WA uh, for an introduction. And I've said, let's see if we can tie it in with a tournament over there. Um, you know, go support the WA guys and, you know, maybe play an RTT or something. Um, Michael being up in Brisbane now, the relationship I've got with him, I've said, look, I'll, I'll find a reason to head to Queensland shortly. And if anything, I'll go have a beer with him. But uh, there's a, a GT on in September, I think. Michael, yeah, no, um, yeah, Northside Alliance, September 1st, 2nd, yeah. 3rd, 150 people major that you're definitely coming to, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I'd put my name down on the waiting list. Um, but uh, the travel, beyond playing Warhammer in different states, the travel presents both... I guess problems but also opportunity i don't work very well on flights like i can't get my laptop out and do three hours of work on a flight to perth from adelaide it's a great time to read a codex or an index so it's a great time time to read a mission pack and, and commit different things to memory uh, i haven't yet painted a model on a plane and i don't think i'll start but uh the temptation has been there uh, I do take models with me because uh, I don't have the tedium of housework and things to do when I get back to my hotel at night. Normally, it's half a bottle of red. And yeah, look, again, get my codex out or do something like that. But So I, I see it as opportune time to read, consume, absorb, and, and plan, if anything. Um, <clears throat> if I'm not sleeping on a plane, that is. Um, but yeah, it... It is a good question and something I think I should probably do a bit better. No, it's awesome. At least you're able to make the most of that time and opportunity. Yeah. Like that, so that time, like it's easy enough, as you said, to just binge watch something on Netflix or scroll through TikToks. But being being proactive yeah. in your study and 
time yeah. to oh, I say study in the sense of you're studying the codex, you're trying to learn more information and get yeah. maybe be proactive is amazing. And using that time in hotels to paint models is great. Like clear off some of that yeah. pile of potential and uh yeah. clear off the backlog so you come back and oh there's one less thing you have to worry about. So um yeah, that's awesome. I was gonna hand oh, Michael, do you have have you had to travel at all like uh, interstate and play games or not yet, unfortunately? So last year was a big year for me for interstate travel. I went to Adelaide for Uprising. I went to Newcastle for ATC and I went to Melbourne twice for Vic Team Championship. So it was definitely my biggest ever year of travel. Uh, before that, I've only really done one event a year. So huge year of travel for me. Probably not going to do that much again in a, in a rush. It, it was a lot, especially the year that Asher was born. But I, I think it's about trying to identify maybe just one or two events that I can go to again, that planning and communication with my partner will be absolutely critical, but I, I do really like traveling for events. I've been in the hobby long enough that I've got a lot of mates that are interstate that I don't see as often as I'd like, you know, like this year at ATC was an opportunity to catch up with all the mates that I'd made or already had from last year's ATC. It it's great. It's such a good way to enjoy the hobby. I do recommend when and where possible heading over with some mates. I was fortunate enough both times I went to Victoria last year, the very first time I went travel with my partner and son because it was in school holidays. So I did the event and then we had a few days afterwards in Melbourne, which we got to spend, which was fantastic. That was a great way to travel for us. Some long Uber rides because uh, we stayed in the city and it was out at Ringwood. But then the next time I traveled, I went down with a fantastic group of boys from here up in Brizzy, took a bit of a, I'll say a bit of an unconventional team, a bit of a mixed bag from lots of different places, which was awesome. I, I'm i not part of a gaming club or group. It's something that I, I made a conscious decision many, many years ago uh, just to yabby. kind of, yeah, no, 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 this yabby is rubbish for me. I made the conscious decision just to kind of stand on my own two feet and go, back then there was a lot of a lot of politics in 40K and I just went, I what, want more. more. It's gotten better. Um, I, I, I just went, I want my reputation to be based 100% on what I do. If, if I ever have a problem or if someone has a problem with me, it's because of something I've done or if someone has good things to say about me, it's because of what I've done. So for me, sometimes team events can be a little bit more difficult because I don't have that group, but not anymore. And the group that we went down with to Vic, we honestly just had the absolute best time, just like a massive boys weekend. We went to Aldi to load up on on beer and just had a great time. So traveling for events, I can't recommend it enough, but make sure you don't overdo it because I definitely overdid it. And now it's about really toning back. That's pr pretty fair. Like making sure you communicate and get those things far in advance is great. So um, my prize for me is like the big event I'll travel to and make the most of for, but otherwise I can't, well, I'm, don't, I'm not going to put myself at financial risk to go to other places like that and do that sort of thing. So I guess the one thing that's mentioned, so you guys obviously are aspiring competitive 40K players. You want to do well. Like I um, I don't know what your own respective goals are, but for myself, I would love to make the Australian WTC team and I'm working towards that. But we have real lives. We can't do, do this full time, unfortunately. We have to do other things. How do you balance, so for yourself, starting with yourself, Ben, how do you balance the desire to get better to study to listen to podcasts and do everything 40k addicted whilst doing everything else like do you do you just have to cut, tell yourself this isn't pain put in the roof of my head or do you ch have other mantras and uh philosophies per se yeah look um i have a personal goal this year um and that was to finish inside the top 100 of the itc uh, asia pack so an achievable goal um beyond that uh, look, I, I think we all want to be really good players. I think we all put enough money, time, effort, energy, emotion, careful planning into it to to not want to tank every game you play and just say, hey, at least I had fun. Um, yeah, it's... I with, with me, when I do something, I'm, I'm generally all in. I don't do things half-baked. Uh, I also run the risk of burning out. I take something too seriously. I go in too hard, too fast. Um, I, If I don't achieve what I achieve, then I run the risk of walking away from it. With this, I 
I'm 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 sort of older and wiser, a little bit more more realistic. I'm almost 43. Uh, I've I've got to realize that. Um, yeah, look, it, it's a passion. It's been a passion since I was 12 years old. Um, it's one that I shelved, but it, in the main, I think my objective at the moment is just to see the community as strong as what it is right now. I think with strong community, anything's possible. Uh, Adam Napier has told me stories over a beer how they used to struggle to get eight people to an RTT or they'd get the seventh and they'd be begging the eighth person to come. Now they're capping events just to, you know, keep them at a, a relative size that that's ma manageable for a single TO. So um, I'm all about build it up, build it and they will come, so to speak, that old catch cry from the 80s film. Um, but look, if, if I get good along the way and good enough and I get tapped on the shoulder for something bigger and something better, then yeah, great. Absolutely. But just just have fun, roll some dice, play hammers. And the best part about this community is uh, I haven't yet met a uh, Block Your Ears Kids fuckwit. So uh, everyone I've met has been absolutely amazing. I've made some amazing friends and yeah, done some incredible networking and I probably enjoy the community as much as I do the game. No, that's awesome. And I think some very wise words to take and keep in mind. How about yourself, Michael? So I know obviously you're a coach for the Queensland team this year and a player last year um, and someone who wants to do well. Obviously, you want to compete and do the best you can. But how do you manage that whilst doing everything else and like your own competitive desire? It's it's definitely a hard one. I, I feel quite privileged in that I, I do live in Queensland and we are such a competitive state that I have been able to tick off some, some of those really, really big goals. So <clears throat> I've... You know, I've won GTs, I've won RTTs, I've won team tournaments, I've become part of Team Queensland the last two years, playing last year and coaching this year. And I guess it's about just setting really reasonable expectations for where you are in your life. So I have never been a coach before, was coaching this year, um, was picked, just straight out was picked to be the coach because of my performances in the past and my uh, eye to detail, quite a, quite a sharp eye to detail, which has served me well in my games and in team events and preparing things like that. So for me, I asked for some feedback and said, how am I going as a coach? And I got what was probably the best possible feedback I could get where on the day coaching, didn't put a foot wrong, did everything that was needed, was able to deal with the issues, was able to support my team. In the pre-lead up, like I, I was a bit limited with the amount of time I could put in. I couldn't go to every single training day. I couldn't stay for as long as every single training day. And that, that was some feedback that came to me is that like, you know, it would have been nicer to have you there more. But then the flip side that then came out of that was, but if you were at every single training day for as much as we needed and you were training as hard as everything like that, you'd probably be on the team playing instead of coaching. So for the amount of time I could put in, I felt like I'd achieved my goal, which was supporting my team to make sure we could get the win. And I was stoked with that. I was like, awesome, sweet. I've done everything I need to do. I can sit there happy, proud. I've done everything. I haven't let my team down. And knowing that if if I could have done more, I wouldn't have been limited with this one role. I could have really pushed for player selection. And I went, sweet, I'm I'm really happy with that. That shows that I'm I'm definitely a good enough player, but I need to to have those other priorities set. So representing Queensland again this year was fantastic, especially because it was in the home state and I didn't have to travel. It's definitely something I want to do in the future. Like you, Sam, I guess I dream of one day pulling on the green and gold. Um, just need all the fantastic Eldar players to stop playing Eldar. That would be lovely, which I don't see them do anytime soon because I feel like that faction mastery is is one of my biggest strengths. So if everyone could stop playing the the new hotness, that would be amazing and just give me a chance for for next year. But it's it's a long-term goal for me right now. It's a goal that... If I achieve, when I achieve, it will be the right time for me and I'll be able to take my family over with me wherever it is, which will be really, really special for us. Yeah, how awesome. amazing How amazing is it that the team we've got representing Australia, all of them, and then you've got this next layer that are also itching to get on that team but are also realistic about where they sit and what they have to do. And I talk about that renaissance all the time, I think. Our community is so strong, alive and well. And you probably understate yourself a bit there, Michael. You were, 
you were the favourites going into ATC, um, but I know how stressed out you were about it all. I know how focused and committed you were to it. And I was like, holy shit, imagine if this guy was actually playing. I'd probably, like, block you for that week. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, look, it, I, it, I'm, I'm really fortunate that I can have conversations with Australian team members quite regularly. We've yeah. got Duck, we've got Eric, we've got Simon, we've got Liam, we've got half of last year's WTC team that live very, very close to, to where I live that I see frequently at events or training days. And and they're really great to ask that question. And I've, I've had those conversations. Say, hey, look, this is one thing I'd like to do in the future. Be honest with me. Don't don't blow smoke up my ass. Is it a potential for me? And it's, it's always been up. You definitely have the potential in years' time, in a few years' time. It's not right now. And I go, that's fantastic. Like, I don't need it yeah. to be right now. Right now would be a terrible time to, to be to be being picked because I'd have to turn it down. It's just, it doesn't work with, with my son and with my partner and with where we are at life. Give me four or five years, be perfect. So when I'm ready, I'm going to be ready at the right time. Yeah. Awesome. I think a lot of good words of wisdom there, like to balance things out and um, rest, understand where you are. Like, look, I would love to do this, but other, right now there's other priorities. But I think it's good to say that you did, made the most of the opportunities when you had them, right? You were there for the coaching days and you stood as you stood there as long as you could and you were there to help as much as you could. You didn't let it sort of pass by. You made the most of the opportunities when they came, grasp them, and then go from there. So that's fantastic. I think some words of wisdom for everyone to do and uh, something to hold on to. Um, but before we wrap things up, guys, so just uh, any final shout-outs and plugs? Uh, so start with yourself, Ben. Uh, any final shout-outs and plugs you want to have before... Uh, the um, Aiden McKinley's asked a question if you're a character in 40k who would you be and why um, I don't want to leave you hanging there Aiden uh, I'd definitely be Iron Father Ferros so I do love fixing up a car and uh, getting it running again and shooting and killing shit too so yeah I'd be I'd be Ferros um, I want to shout out literally everyone in the community um, you know, the Dale Sumners down under 40K, Adam Camilleri, Art of War down under, Emperor, who I know sponsor the down under scene here, D6 Designs. Um, I know uh, you, you gave a subtle plug to your mate up in Queensland there, Michael, but, um, you know, also the guys at Emperor and D6 Designs that support down under 40K. Phil at the Dragons there, who uh, are also a part sponsor of uh, the gathering storm anyone that's logged in listened uh yourself sam for reaching out and uh bringing us on the show community is just absolutely amazing um yeah look uh for me it's almost tear jerking i absolutely love it i think it's fantastic you're a, a former gridiron player uh as am i well you're a former elite gridiron player, but our bodies only lasted so long. And the beauty of this hobby is that it'll last as long as we want it to. So, um, yeah, just, no. yeah. Beautiful words, beautiful words. Any, uh, yeah. any final plugs for yourself, Michael? And who's your, if you're a 40K player, oh, sorry, a 40K player, a 40K character, who would you be and why? There we go. I know exactly who I'd be. This this quote's always stood out to me. It's from Eldar Codex, like fourth edition. So it's something that I'm like, yeah, this this makes me want to be Eldar. But it's a there's a farce here called Mirren Balan. And the quote is, the stars themselves once lived and died in our command, yet you still dare oppose our will. And I just think it's one of the most badass things you can say it's like dude Fucking we literally nerd. control we can literally control this galaxy and you think you can come up against this so that's who i want to be i want to be someone with balls that big that literally just goes big fuck you to to that um my last plugs look i've shouted out if the the gaming store there is fantastic the guys are so knowledgeable in every aspect highly recommend i know the vic boys when they were up i was listening to some adults and stuff they all went in and had some games and and checked it out they, they're co-sponsors of our podcast and I can't thank John enough for his decade-long support of me in this hobby, looking after me, supporting me, sponsoring me to go to tournaments and things like that. He's He's been a huge, huge friend in this. Um, aside from that, I'm going to plug, plug us a little bit because Ben decided not to. The, the Gathering Storm podcast, look, you can find us on Spotify and on Apple Podcasts. We are bang average 40k players bang average 40k podcast slightly above average banter i will state that with very very average luck with recording uh difficulties as it has 
unfortunately been the last couple of uh, sessions, but we're we're getting better, I promise. Uh, and aside from that, just the the community again, like Ben said, the the Queensland community up here, you're all fantastic. You're all a bunch of absolute legends, and you know how much you know we we as a community are so lucky. And Queensland is so strong because of the people because of the groups, because of your Josh McGowan's, because of your, your Northside Alliances and your normal blokes and your low rollers and your drop bear gamers and your ITAs, Ipswich Tabletop Associations uh, yep. and not not Yabbies up here, thank God. But any, and any groups I've missed, Pub Hammer, I'm trying to think of every single group. We are, we are as strong and as flourishing because of all of you and it's freaking sick to be part of that community. No, thank uh, absolutely, and plug the, the, the Facebook group as well. So uh, to join the group of like-minded people who are bang average forty k players and above average banter, you can join that and to discuss all things fun and games. So no, really, really appreciate you guys coming on. And uh, as uh, Ben was doing myself, we'll do the final plug. So D six designs are you. So create some beautiful dice, amazing symbols. I know um, they look amazing, and the some down under forty k ones on the way. So just look out for those, which is awesome. Uh, Emperor cc. So uh, buy some. Good old hobby goods, so 20% off. Uh, and support your local gaming store as well, a friendly local gaming store. And last but not least, patreon.com forward slash down 40k. So help create, uh, help support content creators like myself and others. So Alex and Gleesos and Michael. So they do the Meta Watch around New South Wales. So they've got released today as well as an OG podcast. So uh, just look, any little bit of money will help goes a long way to help host with the hosting fees and everything else like that. So no, thank you very much, Michael and Ben. Really, really appreciate the chat. Um, a lot of good advice there, share for um, myself, and I'm sure others gained a lot of it from it. And I'm very much looking forward to the next recording, which is not hopefully touch wood uh, error free. So we'll be <laughs> fine. So we got there. You, it's all part of the fun and games of doing content creation, and anything new. It's your, there's always going to be bits and bumps along the way, and I'm well aware of them. So you guys have done great so far, and big fans. So thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks so, for having cool. us thank on, you. Sam. No worries. Absolute blast. Really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for listening, and have